In the spirit of World Oceans Day, welcome to this video lesson on the world's oceans and the impact humans have on them. This lesson will be the first in a series of two on the topic, so if you enjoyed this video lesson, make sure you check out the next one as well. Hopefully by the end of this lesson, you'll have learned some interesting facts about the ocean, have a deeper understanding of issues affecting the ocean, and understand the impact humans have on the ocean. For this lesson, all you'll need is a pen and some paper. However, there are templates you can download and use alongside this lesson from the Twinkle website, but these are optional. You can hit the pause button now if you'd like a second to grab those things. Now that we're all set up, let's kick things off with some fun facts about the ocean. The ocean covers 70% of the Earth and produces 50% of the world's oxygen. This mostly comes from plankton that lives in the ocean and photosynthesizes. There are many layers to the ocean, each with different characteristics. For example, different layers have different temperatures, amounts of light, and sea life. Even though there's so much to see, over 80% of the ocean hasn't been seen at all. It's really difficult to explore the depths of the ocean because the deeper you go, the more intense the pressure gets. It's also really cold and dark, so not the easiest place to explore. The Arctic Ocean is the smallest ocean in the world, and it's also covered in ice, which polar bears live on. In contrast, the Pacific Ocean is the largest ocean in the world. It's also surrounded by a ring of volcanoes called the Ring of Fire. The Pacific Ocean is also where you'll find the Great Barrier Reef, which is the largest coral reef in the world. However, there are some less fun facts about the ocean as well. Since 1995, Australia's Great Barrier Reef has lost more than half of its coral due to pollution and coral bleaching, which has occurred because of climate change. Climate change is also responsible for the icy surface of the Arctic getting smaller. As you can imagine, this would be a problem for the polar bears that are living there because their homes are getting smaller and smaller as well. Okay, it's time to test your memory. Use the words on the screen to fill in the blanks. If you'd like to listen to the fun facts again, go to this point in the video. Hit the pause button to give yourself more time to fill in the answers and then unpause it when you want to see what they are. And go. And here are the answers. How did you do? Now see if you can answer this question. If you were far away in space looking down at the Earth, what color do you think it would be? Hmm. Any ideas? Well, if you guessed blue, you'd be correct. Earth is even referred to as the blue planet. This is because, as mentioned previously, the majority of the Earth's surface is covered by ocean. There are actually five oceans in the world. Can you name them? To give you a hint, we've already talked about two of these oceans during this video. If you want more of a challenge, tell me where they are on this map. Hit pause to give yourself time to do this activity. Ready for the answers? Well, here they are. Did you manage to name all five oceans? Well done if you did, and if you didn't, take a moment now to pause the screen and try to memorize the names of these oceans and where they are as best as you can. You never know, this might come in handy later. For now though, let's go back to talking about the oceans, the different issues that affect them, and the issues that affect the sea life living underneath the surface. Earlier, we mentioned climate change and pollution. While these issues could both be complete other lesson videos, a very visible consequence of pollution can be seen when we look at the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. This is an area in the North Pacific Ocean carrying a huge amount of plastic waste. The area is estimated to be about 1.6 million square kilometers. To give you an idea, the Northern Territory in Australia is roughly 1.4 4 million square kilometers. So this garbage patch is even bigger than that. The reason there is so much garbage concentrated in one spot is because when rubbish enters the ocean, it gets carried away by the tides into the sea and eventually reaches an area of circulating currents called gyres. These are like big, slow moving whirlpools that trap the rubbish and it essentially stays there until someone comes along and cleans it up. So now you're probably wondering, why don't we just send a bunch of people out there with some boats and some nets to scoop up the rubbish and clean that area up? Well, while there are definitely people working on it, it's also really difficult to do. On that note, it's time for a research activity. Hop on your favorite search engine and have a go at finding the answers to these questions. You also have the option of checking out Twinkle's differentiated reading comprehension activity on the garbage patch for more information. 
Hit the pause button now and then unpause the video when you're ready to go through the answers together. Good job, I hope you had some fun doing some research on your own. It's worth noting that if some of your answers are different to mine, that's totally fine. The first question was name one of the challenges to cleaning up the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Here are a couple of the reasons it's so difficult. First of all, a lot of these plastics are really, really tiny and are actually called microplastics, meaning they're smaller than five millimeters in size. This makes them really hard to even see, let alone clean up. Another challenge is that the size of the garbage patch is so vast. Remember how I told you it was bigger than the Northern Territory in size? And because it's in the middle of the ocean, it would take many, many ships working for a countless amount of time to tackle the issue. Another issue would be no matter how hard you're working to clean up the ocean, there is still rubbish entering it. Question number two was what are microplastics and where do they come from? As I mentioned previously, microplastics are tiny bits of plastic smaller than five millimeters in size. They are often the result of larger pieces of plastic breaking down over time. Question three was how can floating plastics harm marine life? Sea life can easily mistake plastics for food and eat them. They can also become poisoned by plastics that have absorbed pollutants and even become tangled or trapped in them. So now we know a bit more about the ocean as well as some of the issues affecting it and hurting the marine life. We talked about the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, but actually there are at least four more garbage patches very similar around the world made of floating ocean debris. So the big question is what can we do to help? While cleaning it up seems like an obvious solution, an easy and accessible thing that we can do is to stop adding to the problem. So this is where I leave you with a pledge. You can use a template from the Twinkle website for this, or you can just use your pen and paper. Your task is to write down one thing you're going to try and do to help reduce the amount of plastic entering the ocean. Here are some suggestions you can choose from or you can come up with your own. Hit the pause button while you're thinking and unpause when you're ready to move on. Good job. And now that you've made your commitment, the final step is to talk about it with a friend, family member, or anyone else you know. You never know, maybe they'll wanna join in on your mission too. So after this video ends, you can go up to them and say something like, hey, I've been learning about how plastics are affecting the ocean and I've decided I wanna help. So I'm going to insert pledge here. Do you want to do it with me? Sharing your mission with a friend can make it feel more real and can help add to your motivation to commit to it. It's also always more fun when you're doing it with the support of a friend. Thank you for joining me on this lesson about the world's oceans. As mentioned previously, this is the first video lesson in a series of two on the world's oceans, so please check out the next one if you're interested. I hope your day goes swimmingly and I'll catch you next time.